Madison, Wisconsin is one of the top startup environments in the country. More on that up next. Your real estate news starts now. Thank you for watching your real estate news. I'm Stacey Hansen. It's time for this week's real estate numbers with a look at the percent change in home sales in each county throughout South Central Wisconsin for the month of February 2017, according to the Wisconsin Realtors Association. In Dane County, sales were up 5.7%. In Columbia County, sales were down 17.9%. In Rock County, sales were down 14.9%. In Green County, residential sales were down 12.5%. In Sauk County, sales were down 11.6%. In Grant County, residential sales were down 9.5%. In Dodge County, sales were down 10.2%. In Iowa County, sales were up 37.55%. And in Jefferson County, sales were down 18.8%. The total number of homes sold in South Central Wisconsin in February was 711. That's down 2.6% from February of last year. The Oscar Mayer plant on the east side of Madison now has a final shutdown date of July 31st of this year. According to the Wisconsin State Journal, Kraft Heinz, which is the parent company of Oscar Mayer, had notified the state of Wisconsin previously that March 31st would be the shutdown date. A company spokesman said extra time was needed to make a smooth transition as the production of Oscar Mayer meats moves to other Kraft Heinz factories in the U.S. Madison's Oscar Mayer plant has been operating since 1919. It had as many as 4,000 employees at its peak in the 1970s, according to the journal. Today, approximately 300 employees in Madison remain to assist with the transition. A new study says that Madison, Wisconsin is one of the top startup environments in the country. According to a study conducted by Progressive Policy Institute for TechNet, Madison ranks number 26 out of the 35 metropolitan areas around the U.S. with a thriving startup environment. Other Midwestern cities that made the list were Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Minneapolis, and Detroit. According to the Wisconsin State Journal, it's the second publication in the past month to acknowledge Madison for excelling in the tech field. A Brookings Institute report said that Madison is one of the few metro areas in the U.S. with a rising share of tech jobs. If you'd like additional information on these headlines, please reference the media sources you see listed on your screen. You can also like us on Facebook and visit wi57.tv. Don't go away, we'll have more real estate news right after the break. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Gabe Albrecht from Lake Point Realty. Welcome, Gabe. So I hear you guys have a new listing in Verona. Yeah, we do, and it is a great opportunity for anyone that wants to be in Verona. Get your pens ready. The address is 385 Breckenridge Road. It's a five-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath, three-car garage, and uh, it's got a great open floor plan. Um, the four bedrooms are on the upper level with one in the, on the lower level, so it's great for family and guests. And um, there's a park right across the street, plenty of trails. Epic is literally a stroll away. So uh, for anybody that wants to be in Verona and they're looking for a five bedroom that's under 450, we're asking 340, or sorry, 337, um, come out and see me this Sunday, April 9th from one to three, I'm doing an open house, and uh, it's you know best to see it, the pictures don't do it justice. Great, so definitely check out that open house, that one sounds fantastic, and if you're an Epic employee, it really couldn't be better, yeah. being so close. So let's talk a little bit, um, how you at Lake Point can help people solve some of their real estate issues they might be having. Well, um, I like to think of real estate and I, I make it kind of akin to a, a poker game. It's just a big poker game. And uh, I want to win and I want to help people win. And so really we just want to have a conversation with people and it's no obligation. Just kind of going through all of the scenarios that somebody would come up with uh, when they're going to sell their house, when they're thinking of buying their house and um, going through all of the strategies that one could take to put them in a great position to win. 
and you definitely want to win at that poker game, as you call it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about offers and you know making a high offer. Is the highest offer usually the best offer? Um, not always, because if you have a seller that wants to move quick, you might have the highest offer, but you can't move fast enough. So maybe you don't have the best, that might not be the best offer. And that's something that sellers should uh, think about. And um, when they do have offers come in, there's a lot of things to, uh, you know, a lot of things to think about. And um, so. Yeah, that's a good yeah. way to, to put it. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have necessarily thought of it that way. And then thinking about this, you know, sort of still as that, as that poker game, there's a lot of competition out there if you're a seller, um, too. How do you deal with some of that? Um, well, you want to know your competition. So um, researching what is on the market and then what's coming on the market. Very popular thing to do right now, or, or you might see, is these uh, withheld and delayed listings. And they're kind of showing their hand in some respects. So you're able to see what somebody's going to put their house on the market for, but there might be an opportunity there to come in before they do, and you already know what their price is going to be. So can you beat people on price? Can you beat people on timeliness? Um, how can you beat the game? How, how can you beat the market and win? And those are some, some great tips for winning at real estate. Well, thanks so much, Gabe, with Lake Point Realty. Thank you, Stacy. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Tessa Kenny with Alliance Realty Center. Welcome, Tessa. So great to have you on the show. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about this market that we're facing today. Would you characterize it as a buyer's market or a seller's market? It's definitely a seller's market out there. It's crazy, to be honest. We have so many pre-approved buyers and some cash buyers just waiting on properties to come on the market. So how is your inventory looking right now? Uh, it's pretty pretty low actually. To give you an idea, we have about a thousand pending offers right now and we have less than 900 that are actually active without offers. That just shows one ratio of why this is a seller's market. Wow, I'd say for sure. Now there's a lot of um, brokerage companies out there. What would you say separates you from some of the others out there? Well, we're definitely a boutique company. Alliance Realty Center is a center for all your real estate needs. We have an abundance of resources for our clients. Uh, buyers or sellers, you can watch our testimonies and learn more at AllianceRealtyCenter.com. So I saw that your market averages um, for a home sales price is about 10% above market value, which is great. How are you accomplishing this for the homeowners out there? We specialize in direct response marketing. So essentially what we do is target market buyers that will actually make an offer in your property. We connect them with the home, we get them to relate, to find true value, and that's also how we sell our houses so quickly. That's great too. So it's great to know that you can have your house sold really quickly with you guys if you're looking for that. Now what tips do you have for buyers then in regards to submitting their offers? Well I want to caution buyers. We're finding a lot of the appraisal contingencies removed from offers and that might be okay. But given the fact that values might increase 4% and yes they have increased a drastic 8% from last year, you still want to stay within range. You don't want to end up selling your property in a couple of years and find yourself upside down. So why do you feel there are more buyers than sellers right now? Well, buyers are taking advantage of the still relatively low interest rates. We don't know what the future holds. So if you have any questions, whether you're a buyer or a seller, please contact us. And at the very least, you can have free advice. Okay, Tessa, so how would somebody contact you? You can go to our website, AllianceRealtyCenter.com, or call or text me, 608-333-8704. All right, thanks so much. Definitely check out Alliance Realty Center. Stay Thank with you. us. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. Let's go now to Property Revival Realty. John Schneider is in the studio. John, let's talk about what homeowners, home buyers, what they need to consider now in the springtime. Well, thank you, Stacy, for having us. Uh, I really, it's been a busy week here, and, and one of the reasons is this spring thaw, and winters in Wisconsin can really wreak havoc on a homeowner's property, and it's important that we understand what 
you can do to fix these things and, and adjust um, as the spring market comes. Uh, we have a property right now that we've been working on where the spring thaw came in and we had noticed in the winter that there was definitely some potential water damage that had occurred in the ceiling, but uh, we couldn't tell if it was past or active. And, uh, but once that spring thaw came in, we found out real quick that it was an active leak. Um, and because of our revival specialists and, and our real estate agents that we have who are trained to recognize these things, we were able to get in there, make some adjustments very quickly on this project. We ended up having to tear basically the back uh, quarter of this home off uh, to get it done, but we did it right, right. we did it fast. Um, we were able to get this project back online and really get this um, pr project ready to sell. And I, it's one of those houses that we will be putting on the market here in not too long. So I would like to go to the property actually and see if we can talk to Jerry and have him show you what we're talking about. Okay, and I see Jerry Walls there on the property. Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, like John was talking about, the winters in Wisconsin are very detrimental on your property. The extreme cold and the extreme warm weather in this state really run your house to the ringer. That's where I like to talk about the advantage that Property Revival Realty agents give to our clients when coming in to the spring and fall markets. Uh, coming into the spring market, we get the thaw out and, and lots of water and moisture in the ground, which poses problems for leaky basements or roofs or foundation issues. Working with a revival specialist, they have a team of construction specialists can jump right in, attack this problem in a professional way, make sure that you get the most effective affordable cost so that you can remedy these problems, move on, and still hit that spring market so you can get your ha house to show its best foot forward in any application, whether it be a roof problem, or a foundation problem, or just making some updates, this is where we really shine. Now, Jerry, what can you tell us about this particular property? What's going on with this one? Well, as the thaw came in, like we were discussing, uh, water from the left-hand side of this building kind of pocketed with inside the property and it froze over the winter, which didn't show signs of it until it started to thaw. So what we had to do was remove the exterior siding, remove the structural header uh, from the property. We had to tear out the roof and we were able to get it in and out within a really good reasonable amount of time and re reasonable amount of budget for our client to really get this thing moving forward. Great to see that example too. And thanks, Jerry. And John, I understand you have an open house at your new facility. Yeah, we are. We're actually really excited. We have an open house on Wednesday, April 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, it's hosted by Louis Dahlberg, one of our real estate agents and specialists, revival specialists. Um, so if you have some time and you'd like to come down and check out our showroom and see a little bit about what it is that we do and how we can assist you in selling or buying or remodeling your home, please let us know. Definitely check that out. Property Revival Realty, thank you very much for coming on the show. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Dondi Zombat Falvey with Bella Domicile. Welcome back, Dondi. Good to see you again. Thank you. So Good to be a, here. A lot of time goes into the kitchen and bath remodeling that you guys do. How early, I wonder, is it too early to start talking with a designer? Well, you know, coincidentally, we do have some projects that start with a precipitous event, like a flood, a fire, or an explosion. I've had all three of those. Wow. <laughs> but generally, we're working with people that are frustrated with their space. Uh, so my, my message is don't wait till you're really frustrated. We can, we can eliminate that frustration. Come and see us early in the process. As soon as you're feeling frustrated, something's not working for you, that's the time when we can help. Great, so you don't have to try to sit on it and try to come up with all these ideas yourself. That's yeah. what you guys are there yeah, for. Yeah, a lot of people are frustrated. They don't know what they could do, and that's kind of where we can come in and, and be of assistance. Open a world of possibilities. So if somebody comes in then and says, kind of speaking of you know, how long things might take, you know, I, I want my kitchen completed before my kid goes back to school this fall. Mm -hmm. Then um, how early should they start talking about if they have a set deadline like yeah. that? Uh, the earlier the better. The, in general, a project is about three to six months from when they first start to uh, take action. They actually say that people think about a project for three years before they start, to, before they take it on. So, but three to six months is typical. Now, some people are not typical. Some people want to be, it's a project you're maybe only going to do once or twice in your life and you want to take the time and get it right. So some people are comfortable moving a little faster. 
The person that just sold their house and is moving into a condo and wants it updated before they uh, move in, that project is going to probably move in a one to two month time frame. You know, we can kind of ramp that up. So just being um, being clear with your per people that you're working with on what your expectations are is important. Right, and if you're the kind of person that wants to take their time, it helps to sort of know this three three to six month range that you might want to. Absolutely, I never want to rush someone through that process. Um, yeah, that's not a good feeling. Yeah. So what steps during the design phase do you guys do to kind of keep the project moving forward? That's a great question. We do have a project timeline on our website. Um, and basically what we do is we meet with the client and start to understand the scope of the project, but we give homework. I'm sorry, that might be bad news. <laughs> Um, but for things like appliances, we kind of advise people based on what they've told us, what they might want to uh, use for appliances, where it's a gas or an induction range. Uh, is it a wall hung toilet? Is it an air tub versus a whirlpool tub? And that gives them, they might have some homework to go check some of those things out to make sure they're making the right decision for them. It's homework, but it's kind of fun homework It is, too. it yeah. is. I feel that way. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Dondi. Welcome back to The Real Estate News, I'm Ellen Barrett. And now with a rebounding housing market, many homeowners are planning, making plans for a little remodeling. This is a great time to invest in some home improvements. So where should you start first? Believe it or not, there is a lot of untapped potential around your home that you may not even recognize. Interior designer Sabrina Soto joins us to help navigate those options and convert forgotten spaces into savings. Sabrina, thank you so much for being with us on The Real Estate News. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Sabrina, we are all trying to find ways to add value to our homes. Can you break down the untapped potential or forgotten space that many people overlook? Absolutely. So when people think of remodeling, adding value, they always think kitchen, bathroom, which is true. But one space they forget to think about is that fifth wall. And most people don't know what I'm talking about, but it's your ceiling. A lot of times you could really add visual interest and make a space feel grander. So it could be as simple as painting or wallpapering your ceiling but you could also expose the beams, add skylights to make the space feel really big and airy. I love that tip. And now based on your design experience, what would you recommend to someone looking to make their home feel bigger without adding a square foot? Obviously that fifth wall is a great option. Okay, so in, in my case, in this house, um, we bought this house because of the great room, which seemed like it was a great room, but it's really not that big, but it seems big because I have those exposed beams and the skylights, not only in this room, but the um, adjoining dining room. And when people come to the house, they're like, oh my gosh, your space is so big. It's not, it just feels big because there's so much natural light coming in. So if you don't have the means of adding an addition, get more natural sunlight into the space. And the great thing, we just installed um, Velux skylights into our house. They now open they, with, with a little remote control and the uh, blinds are on a remote control system too. So it not only brings in natural light, but it brings in fresh air and it makes the space feel so inviting. I love that, and I think those those tips are ideas that a lot of people don't think about first, but what a great way to open up your space and just make it more inviting and, and change it up as well. And now, Sabrina, what are some other home design trends you are seeing for 2017? I love talking trends. Okay, so let's see. For walls, still you're gonna see a lot of white walls, light grays, things like that. Um, when it comes to kitchens, you're seeing a lot of two-tone kitchens, so the upper cabinets are different color than the bottom cabinets. Uh, for metal and hardwares, you're not gonna see a lot more of that copper and rose gold you've seen the last couple of years, but you're still gonna see brass, but instead of shiny brass, they're gonna be more like um, muted matte brasses and black steel. And for appliances, these black matte appliances are gorgeous that are coming on the market. I love it. And where can our viewers go for some more information if they want to access all these great tips? Okay, so go to whyskylights.com and it's whyskylights.com. Wonderful. Again, Sabrina Soto, thank you so much for being with us on The Real Estate News. Thank you. Thanks to our guests for stopping by today, and thank you, our viewers, for tuning in. Join us again next week. I'm Stacey Hansen for The Real Estate News, making a positive impact and leading the real estate market.